Hi, I'm Mark, a professional artist and an art teacher. In this week's episode of my series for artists I call YouTube Art School, I'll show you how to draw simple hands for your characters. Easy to draw even if you're an art baby. And then another method to transition to as you build more experience. And the price for the class is either a like or a sub because of course it's not free. Come on, get real. Uh oh, never mind. Quickly, let's get this class started. Class is in session. Pay attention. So, drawing hands, is it a struggle for you? It is for a lot of artists. It wouldn't be a surprise. And if so, you've come to the right place. In just a couple of minutes, you'll have two different recipes to draw hands. Two methods to draw hands that range from more simple, stylized to realistic, depending on your style or skill level. That should come in pretty handy. So, we'll start with simple hands. Good for more like cartoony style, but also a lot easier to draw. Now, since we're starting easy, that will go for the hands, of course, but also for the gestures or the poses of the hands. We'll try to focus on typical angles that you'll draw the hands from. You know, like the top of the hand, the palm, the side of the hand, the fist. And then from there, we'll be able to expand into more complicated poses and perspectives. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start real simple with a wrist. The palm and the fingers. Wow. Well, it doesn't look like much yet, but that's the most important step. For better result, make sure that you round the corners of the two squares that we're starting from here. Anyways, now step two. Let's uh, duplicate this over and we'll just want to add a little extra to our rounded square for the thumb, just like that. Let's also curve the top line here to get ready to draw the fingers, making sure that the curve goes a little lower on the side of the pinky. And then from here though, we can already imagine the hand. You can, right? Can you? All we gotta add really are the outlines for the fingers and making sure that we leave a little bit of space in between each of them. Also, fingers tend to be um, narrower at the tip too, so keep that in mind. And from here, let's add the thumb, which is basically attached to a circle, like a, well, technically a sphere, but a circle for now that should fit nicely right there with the existing line splitting that circle in half right here. And it shouldn't go any higher than the line here. Take notes. Maybe we can also add a suggestion for some nails and oh my, we have a hand. It's stylized, of course, not 100% anatomically correct, but I think most would agree that this looks pretty good. Decent, convincing. Now, what if we want to draw poses where um, maybe the fingers are bent or something like a fist? Well, first we'll need to figure out what a bent finger looks like. Really, what we're dealing with here is a simple cylinder. So at the base, I'll draw the sphere that represents the knuckle, just to make it easier to measure things. The first joint here will go right in the middle there, splitting the full length of the finger, including the knuckle, in half. Now for the second joint, let's split it in half again. But really, the tip is a little less than half the remaining length. Like, not quite half. But what happens when we bend this, though? Well, the finger volume will kind of collapse on itself, leading a square-ish outline. And, well, something that looks kind of like a, a Y skin fold in the center here, pointed towards the corners. Basically, we don't want to leave any gaps in the middle, like this. That's bad. All right. Actually, before drawing a fist, let's see what the same hand there looks like, but with the palm facing up. Can actually just grab this whole thing, uh, erase the nails because now they're on the other side and add a line for the thumb muscles. Maybe like push the palm line here just up a bit and we're done. Easy. Now from here, drawing a fist is a lot easier. All we'll see here are the middle or the intermediate phalanges. Maybe a peak of the uh, fingertips too, like this. Let's also bend the thumb as well, of course, and we end up with a simple Fist. <laughs> wow. Is this magic? Of course, we can now raise any number of fingers to make different gestures really quickly like this. Nice. But what about a fist from the side though? Uh oh, that's a little different, but but just as easy. We start the same way with just a slightly narrower square because the hand is wider than it is thick. So we already saw how to draw bent fingers. Uh, so let's just do the same thing right here. Let's add the circle for the thumb and draw the proximal phalanx, just like we did with the closed fist. And maybe the tip of the thumb is showing back there just a bit. There. 
Not bad, right? Now, the last angle that we'll draw is the hardest. We're increasing difficulty here, so I hope you're ready. And if you're not, I'm still gonna show you. Still though, we'll use all the same guidelines that we just saw. Specifically, we'll be drawing a relaxed hand from the sides. So we can start the same way that we did for the side fists here, but making sure that we add another palm's distance to find how long the middle finger will be. All the other fingers are always shorter than that, as I'm sure you're aware. Next, we can add the sphere for the thumb. Attached to that, adding the muscles for the thumb. The thumb itself. And then quickly adjusting the skin folds here. Pads on the side of the hand. And uh, the fingers. So pinky, ring finger, middle finger, and the index. Curving them all just a little bit to make the pose feel a little bit more natural. Now, if I want to do the same thing but the top of the hand instead, just move this over, erase a couple of lines that we don't need from this angle. And now, super quickly, we have a hand from the other side. Let's say that the hand is hanging there on the side of the body. Now, that's pretty good. Let's stop here with our simplified hands. I highly recommend that you focus on these hand gestures here first to get familiar with basic proportions and then go from there and, you know, explore more once you feel like you've got a good handle on this. You should be able to draw a lot of characters with just these few poses and like all the variants that we can achieve with those. Give it a go. Do it. Still though, we're kind of limited by what we can draw with this. So let's move on to a more realistic hand and see how I go about drawing those. And by the way, if you're curious, I teach a much more in-depth way of drawing the hands in my art program to celebrate reaching 1 million subscribers, either in the near future or it's already happened. Who knows? Check the coupon in the video description for the biggest discount that I'll have all year on my art program. The program is a complete art education online from home, where we learn exactly the same thing that you would in a traditional art college. Well, actually, a lot more than that. I have well over 9,000 students now, so you'll be joining a large community of artists that all share the same passion as you. It's awesome. It's like a dream. The coupon is valid until the end of the month, so don't miss out. It's a rare one. Now, back to drawing hands. To draw more realistic ones, we'll have to start thinking in 3D with volumes instead of simple 2D shapes like uh, what we've been doing so far. Before we look at the hand volumes though, let's quickly go over the updated shapes that we're dealing with here. Then we'll turn those into 3D, one thing at a time. So drawing the hand from the top again. Let me show you some of the guidelines that I personally use or just keep in mind when drawing more realistic hands. With our Skelly reference there, we'll be able to better understand how this is built. And by the way, when I was talking about phalanges earlier, this is the proximal phalanx, the middle phalanx, and the distal phalanx. Now you know. So anyway, the hand shape for our more realistic hand will look more like a cup shape rather than a square or like a rounded square. But otherwise, it's going to be fairly similar with the added section for the thumb here. I'll just add a couple extra guidelines to help measure like the distances better and figure out where the folds in the palm of the hands should typically form, like when you deform your hands. With the base shape done, let's quickly add the knuckles in there, even though we'll erase those later since, uh, well, this is the inside of the hand. We normally wouldn't be able to see those anyways. They should all fit nice and snug in there. And from here, we can take this length and use it to measure the middle finger the longest one. And then we can use the same curve we used with the more stylized hand to figure out the length of the other fingers and then uh, draw them out. So the guidelines that I was referring to earlier would be in part this here for the pad under the knuckles, like this stuff here, the pad on the outside of the hand and the thumb muscles. All of these are basically the same length, so it's easy to maintain correct proportions. And then always practice drawing the wrist attached to the hand. I'm warning you, you better. Now from the top, I'll just duplicate this and add some details on top of the hand, mostly around the knuckles and the skin fold between the thumb and the index here. So far, not so different from the earlier version. But let's turn this into a volume now. If we give it some thickness, we get this kind of rounded brick. And uh, well, I have the thumb volume separated there just to see it better. The fingers are then just simple cylinders. And these are all the parts that we're dealing with. This is the first step of drawing anything, the construction stage. We start with simple volumes and then slap on the details. Let's do another hand, a relaxed one like, like this one here maybe. I'm just starting with the same volumes I had, just in a slightly different perspective. Let's add the thumb volume, the knuckles, and the cylinders for the fingers. Already pretty convincing. And let's draw this again, but without all the construction lines. Uh, the nails, and, uh, and voila. 
<laughs> a relaxed hand. For the details though, don't hesitate to rely on photo references or like your own hands. Don't wing it. Anyways, let's do another one with foreshortening this time. <laughs> a lot more complicated, at least it might seem that way. But you'll see, once we construct it, it's not that hard. Starting with the same base volumes for the palm and the thumb, if both were kind of laying flat on a table. Uh, let's not forget the wrist here. From here, we add the fingers like we did previously, just good old cylinders foreshortened with each of the fingers pointing in slightly different directions. And already we have a base hand. Now it's just a matter of adding a few details, more or less, depending on how realistic you want it to look. And uh, we're done. Wait, no, we're missing nails. Nails are curved on the surface of the fingers. So we just gotta make sure that we orient them in the same direction as the cylinders that we use to uh, construct the fingers. Not like this. Ugh. Now, I just wanted to mention that this particular angle is not easy. Just like we saw in the first part, start with simpler, more like common hand gestures. Practice getting good at those first before you try and go for more extreme hand gestures and like perspectives. One thing at a time, small incremental steps towards complexity. That's gonna wrap it up for this week's class. Hope that was helpful. Now I gotta hand it to you if you made it this far. You're a good student and you deserve a freebie. You can grab my main brush pack that I use daily for absolutely free in the video description, if you haven't already. It includes the brush that I was using for my drawings today, the legendary line art brush. Also, if you have any requests for future subjects, don't hesitate to suggest them in the comments. And of course, let me know if the content today helped in any way. Drawing hands is hard, but at least now it's not as hard after watching this, hopefully. Anyways, make sure you're subscribed to be on time for next week's class or else.